What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to work with folding and folds in Vim. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn about folds in this video today and folds are essentially a Vim feature that allows us to hide and show certain sections of the code of the text that we're editing to collapse and expand them to open and close them to get a better overview of the thing that we're working with. So a text file, a code file, whatever. And we're going to get right into it with an example. I'm going to open up a terminal here on my desktop and I'm going to use NeoVim to create a new file. Let's call it test.txt. Now this is a core Vim feature. So you can use VI, you can use Vim, you can use NeoVim. It doesn't matter. You don't need to install anything uh, other than Vim itself if it's not installed on your system. And what we can do now is we can just write a couple of things here. So hello world, let me just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that. Hello world, this is a line. This is also a line. So you can just write some random text here like this. And the idea now is that I might wanna have certain sections that I want to collapse and expand. So maybe I want to say that all this text here that I cannot understand is one section and I want to now collapse that section into a fold. So I want to fold it up. And what I can do for that is I can just press Z F. So the Z key and the F key Z F folds this together into a fold. And now I can open this fold and I can close this fold very simply with Z O for open and Z C for close. So Z O for open Z C for close. And this works also if I'm in the middle of it. So here Z C closes and Z O opens. That's the basic idea of a fold. And I can use this now to, of course, um, do this on multiple uh, in multiple positions here. And this can lead to having multiple folds and just a nice overview of the structure of the document. So I can close this, then I can say maybe this is another fold. So again, ZF to close this, and you can see four lines, seven lines. And in between, of course, I can also have text that does not belong to a fold. And if I just try to close it here, it doesn't work. It tells me here no fold found if I try to do ZC. Um, and what we can also do is we can say ZA and ZA is basically just a toggling. So it's like ZC and ZO, but you just have one key bind for that. So if I say ZA here, and if I say ZA again, it just opens and closes it all the time. That's the basic idea. So this is the general idea of the fold. Um, now, first of all, let's talk about the methods that we use for folding here. In this case, right now, we're using a manual fold. So we're folding all the stuff manually, we're defining the folds manually. And this is the default method. So you can just go ahead and say colon set fold method. And you will see that the default method is manual. Um, what you can do now is you can also choose a different fold method. And for this, I'm going to show you an example that I prepared here. Um, I have an examples directory. And if I go into it, you will see I have a Python file and a C file. And if I open up the Python file, you can see I have some code in here, just some random stuff. And what I can do now is I can set default methods to a specific fold method that's based on indentation. So instead of saying set fold method equals manual, I'm going to say set fold method equals indent. And what this does is you can see that my Python functions here, which are based on indentation are collapsed now. So they are collapsed into folds. And you can see that we even have folds inside of folds. So I can close this, I can close this, I can open this, I can open this, I can open this, and so on. By the way, on my system, it also works with a space. So with a white space, you can open the folds, you cannot close them. But yeah, this is also something that you can do. Um, and the interesting thing here is I can close this one and close this one. And if I want to open up all of them, so all the folds, and all the folds within the folds, I can just say Z and capital O to open up also the folds inside of the fold. So again, if I close all of this with Z capital C, which also closes uh, the, the lower levels, if I just say Z O, so Z lowercase O, uh, oh, in this case, it didn't close it. Let me close this again. If I just say Z O, this will close. Um, uh, this will open only the one that I'm focusing on. If I now close this again, and I say Z capital O, it also opens the child folds. That's the basic idea here. 
Um, and I think that Z capital C should actually close everything. Yeah, okay, so I think you need to do it one level below. So if I'm down here, and I say Z capital C, it basically closes all of them. So if I just open it in a normal way, you can see that I have to open up both levels again. Um, what I can also do is I can use Z capital M. So Z capital M to close all the folds, and I can use Z capital R to open all the folds. So I can say Z capital R, everything's open, Z capital M, everything's closed again. So this is also a nice thing that we can do. Um, so let me just, as a summary here, write it down. So ZC is for closing, Z capital C is for closing all, closing all. Then we have ZO, which is for opening, Z O with a capital O, which is for opening all. Then we have Z A, which is for toggling. And then we also have this is one I didn't show we have Z capital A, uh, which toggles the whole thing. So this is also toggling all and then we have uh, Z M and ZR where M is closing, closing all, maybe all with cap letters and opening all with cap letters meaning across the whole document. So this is the indentation example. Now, I also have a file called uh, syntax C. And the reason I call it that is because the method here, fold method has to be set to syntax. And this basically considers all these curly brackets here. If I do that, you can see I can expand this. I can expand this again. I can expand this again, again, and so on. And again, of course, I can say Z capital C to close everything. And uh, yeah, that's the basic idea here. This is the different fold method here syntax. Now one thing that you will notice, and this is important now, um, if I go into my test file, so if I go back to the desktop, and I go into my test file, you will see something which um, is a problem maybe. So if I go ahead now, I define this fold here, uh, I can open it, I can close it and whatnot. If I now go and write and quit, and I go back into the file, the fold is no longer here. And I can also not close it, I cannot open it, nothing is here, the fold is gone. So the fold is something that is not saved in the file by default. So this is just a text file, of course, it doesn't have any information about the fold. So what I need to do to actually save the fold is I need to use a command in Vim that stores the fold information somewhere else. So for example, let's go ahead and make a fold like this, maybe also make a fold like this. And now what I want to do is I want to do the following command MK view, MK view for make view, this is going to store everything. Now I can leave, I can go back into the document, it's not here yet. But I can say colon load to load the fold that I had before. So again, here we have the folds. Now one important thing which I didn't mention up until this point, uh, you can also delete folds. So we cannot just open them, you can also delete them. So if you don't want to have this fold, all you have to do is you have to say Z D. So Z D like this, and then the fold is no longer there. And I can do the same thing here. And then I can do MK view again to save it. And then if I load this again, and I try to load, I don't have any faults. As you can see. So this is basically what you can do with Vim folds. It's just a nice way to structure your code your text into different sections that you can collapse and expand. And it is done in a very convenient way with key combinations. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.